Okay, class, today we're in section 9.8, compare linear, exponential, and quadratic models. Compare linear, exponential, and quadratic models. Before you graph linear, exponential, and quadratic functions, now you would compare linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. Key vocabulary, linear functions, exponential functions, and quadratic functions. So far, you have studied linear functions, exponential functions, and quadratic functions. You can use these functions to model data. Key concept. Please read and get in your notes as needed. Linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. Linear functions behave according to the equation y equals mx plus b, and it's a straight line. We all know that this way, the function would be negative. If the line were going this way, the function would be positive. If we're going up and down, we know that means x equals something. And if it was going horizontal, we know that means that y equals something. Here, we have exponential. y equals a times b to the x is this equation. And an exponential function has this type of shape. Here, we have quadratic. Quadratic behaves according to the equation y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And it has this shape, also called a parabola. And we know that if a is positive, it opens upward, and we have a minimum value. And if a were negative, it would open downward, and we would have a maximum value. Now, once again, that maximum value is called the vertex there. For the minimum value, it is also called the vertex here. Example 1. Choose functions using sets of ordered pairs. Use a graph to tell whether the ordered pairs represent a linear function, an exponential function, or a quadratic function. Okay, so all we do here is look at the ordered pairs for each example. In this case, for A, these are the ordered pairs, and we would graph the ordered pairs. Same thing with B, we graph the ordered pairs. Same thing with C, we graph the ordered pairs. Now, after graphing the ordered pairs, we determine what type of function is. A, after graphing, ends up being exponential. B, after graphing, ends up being linear. And then C, after graphing, ends up being quadratic. Literally, you graph each point for each example. Differences and ratios. A table of values represents a linear function if the differences of successive y values are all equal. A table of values represents an exponential function if the ratios of successive y values are all equal. In both cases, the increments between successive x values need to be equal. All right, now that's just a fancy way of saying the following. To determine if a function is linear, what you would do is you, sub, you would subtract your values, your y values. So 5 minus 2 is 3. 8 minus 5 is 3. 11 minus 8 is 3. Because the differences are all the same, that tells you that the function is linear. Okay, now, to find out if a function is exponential, what you need to do is to divide. So you would say, once again, you're looking at the y values. You would say 0.5 divided by 0.25, and you come out with an answer of 2. If you took 1 and divided it by 0.5, you would also get 2. If you took 2 and divided by 1, you would get 2. When this occurs, when you divide each y value by the previous y value, and it's all, all the same, then you know the function is exponential. You can use differences to tell whether a table of values represent a quadratic function as shown. Quadratic function, y is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 2. So you have a table. What you would do is you would subtract just like you did for the linear. You would say 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. 5 minus 2 is 3. Notice. None of the values are the same. So you subtract one more time or a second time 
as in second power, quadratic. So when you subtract the second time, you get a negative 1 minus 3, that's 2. 1 minus a negative 1 is 2. 3 minus 1 is 2. And notice that the second difference are all the same. And when the second difference is all the same, then you know that the function is quadratic. Example 2. Identify functions using differences or ratios. Use differences or ratios to tell whether the table of values represent a linear function, an exponential function, or a quadratic function. Extend the table to find the y value for the next x value. So when you're doing these, no matter what's going on, it's always best to test. Start with subtraction first and then subtract a second time, and then try the ratio rule. Or does It doesn't matter what order you're going, but find whatever is most comfortable to you. Here, you got a table of values, and notice we don't know whether it's quadratic, linear, or exponential. So we start subtracting. A negative 6 minus 6 is 0. A negative 4 minus 6 is 2. 0 minus a negative 4 is 4 and 6 minus 0 is 0. We see they have nothing in common. Nothing is the same, so we go one more time. 2 minus 0 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. 6 minus 4 is 2. So just like that, we know that it's going to be quadratic. Now on B, for this particular function, once again, we start off by subtracting. 1 minus a negative 2 is 3. 4 minus 1 is 3, 7 minus 4 is 3, and 10 minus 7 is 3. Now, because we got our, our differences being the same by subtracting, we know it's going to be linear. Okay, now notice when we extend the table, the table of values represent a quadratic function like we said here. And when x is 3, y is going to go to 14. The next value for x will be 3. And we know it's going to be 6 plus um, 8, which is 14. Why 8? Because we got 6 and 2. So why is it going to 6 plus 8, which is 14? And then for the linear table, the table of values represent a linear function. When x is 3, y is going to equal to 10 plus 3, which is 13. So once again, if x was 3 right here, we know it's increasing by 3. So 10 plus 3 is 13. Writing an equation. When you decide that a set of ordered pairs represent a linear, an exponential, or a quadratic function, you can write an equation for the function. In this lesson, when you write an equation for a quadratic function, the equation will have the form y equal ax squared. Once again, this is for quad uh, quadratic. y is equal to ax squared. Example 3. Write an equation for a function. Tell whether the table of values represent a linear, an exponential function, or a quadratic function. Then write an equation for the function. So here's our table of values. Here's our solution. Step 1. Determine which type of function the table of values represent. So we do the same thing we did in example 1 and example 2. Okay, so we do our first differences. And we find that nothing's in common. And don't forget to do our first differences. All we're saying is 0.5 minus 2. That's a negative 1.5. 0 minus 0 0.5. That's a negative 0 0.5. 0 0.5 minus 0. That's 0 0.5. And then 2 minus 0 0.5 is 1.5. So now we subtract again because there's nothing the same. And when we do that, we come out with 1, 1, and 1. 1.5 minus 0.5 is 1. 0.5 minus a negative 0.5 is 1. And then a negative 0.5 minus a negative 1.5 is 1. So the table of values represent a quadratic function because the second differences are equal. Step 2. Write an equation for the quadratic function. The equation has the form y equals ax squared. The equation has the form y equals ax squared. 
Find the value of a by using the coordinates of a point that lie on the graph, such as 1 and 0.5. So we write the equation for a quadratic function, which is y is equal to a times x squared. We look at our table, and we locate any two values. Here, they chose to use 1 and 0.5. All right, so now in place of y, we put down the 0.5, and in place of x, we put down the 1. 1 to the second power is equal to 1, so we left with just a. So a is equal to 0.5. So we take the a value, which is 0.5, and we plug it back into the original quadratic equation. So in place of a, we put 0.5. So the equation is y is equal to 0.5 times x squared, and we're finished. Example 4. Solve a multi-step problem. Cycling. The table shows the breathing rates, y, in liters of air per minute of a cyclist traveling at different speeds, x, in miles per hour. Tell whether the data can be modeled by a linear function, an exponential function, or a quadratic function. Then write an equation for the function. All right, so here we're basically going to do everything we did in example two. So we look at our table, realizing that this is our x values and this is our y values. Solution, step one, graph the data. The graph has a slight curve, so a linear function does not appear to model the data. And you notice when you look at it, you see there's a slight curve to it, so you know it's not linear. So it's either going to be exponential or quadratic. All right, now, since it can be exponential or quadratic, okay, you must test it out by either subtracting twice to determine if it's quadratic or dividing. The easiest one to eliminate would be to divide. So in the table below, notice that 5.71 divided by 51.4 is equal to 1.11. 5.71 divided by 51.4 is equal to 1.11. Then notice that 63.3 divided by 5.71, 63.3 divided by 5.71 is also 1.1. 70.3 divided by 63.3 is also 1.1. 78.0 divided by 70.3 is also 1.11. And then 8.66 divided by 78 is also 1.11. So the ratios are all approximately equal and exponential function models the data. Step three, write an equation for the exponential function. The breathing rate increases by a factor of 1.1 liters per minute. So B, that's our B, is equal to 1.11. Find the value of A by using one of the data pairs, such as 20 and 51.4. Now you can use any data pair you want. They just chose 20 and 51.4. All right, now write equation for exponential function y is equal to a times b to the x, and substitute 1.11 for b, 20 for x, and 51.4 for y. So we plug in y, 51.4, a, we're trying to determine, b, that's the rate, so that's 1.1, and x was 20. And we solve for a. So to solve for a, we got to end up dividing both sides by 1.1. When we do that, by 1.1 to the 20th. And when we do that, that's going to cancel. So we end up with 51.4 over 1.1 to the 20th. All right, we use our calculator, and we'll look at the y to the x key. The y to the x key. So we say 1.11 to the 20th. And then uh, take 51.4 and divide it by that. And we come up with a is equal to 60. 6.38.
So our equation ends up being y is equal to 6.3.